Hello, 2023. Uh, <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a little a little bit since my previous video back in 2022. Um, we've had some things change here, of course. Uh, you, most of you have heard about my move. Yeah. This is Plan C. <laughs> that is complete although um, I am still unpacking I've got half of my collection uh, still in a storage unit but it's getting there it's really getting there and in addition to that you know we celebrated Christmas New Year's and of course I'm lucky enough to have a birthday in the first week in January but this one was a great one thank you shout out to my wife for the incredible cake um, so what, where are we headed now in 2023 with the University of Vinyl? I am happy to say it's going to be more of the same. I'm going to be coming at you with concise, insightful reviews of new releases. I'm going to be showing you, of course, one of the more popular features of this channel all of the very cool original pressings that I happen to find in the wild. I will occasionally dip over to Discogs if there's something I can't find. I actually have one of those examples to show today. And what else? Um, you know, I really kind of appreciated and it kind of took to heart the recent video that uh, Dom from Seeking a Thread uh, released, and he is going to be working on a very, very detailed and a thought-provoking plan for 2023. He highlighted, I think he purchased over 400 records last year. Maybe it was more. I'm afraid to look into my Discogs uh archives to see what that number was for me. But but Dom made a point of saying he's going to try and lim limit himself. I think it was to like 72 records that he is going to try and limit himself to purchase in 2023. Um, so that comes out to like six records a month. That is an aggressive uh, goal. And I am not going to, you know, put a number out there today for myself. But I will just say that I appreciated the video, Dom. It was thought-provoking. And I am thinking about making 2023 a more focused, um, less of spur-of-the-moment buys, but kind of going in on a weekly basis to the places that I go with things in mind, whether that is a great, great, great upgrade from uh, a current copy that I may already have of, of a particular album. Um, noteworthy uh, reissues I'm always in, uh, in the hunt for. And just kind of being overall a little more present in my, in my thinking Trying not to get lost in the moment when you are flipping through the bins at, at, at your favorite used haunts. Now, on the other side of the coin, that is one of the best parts of this hobby is the thrill of the hunt, the joy of discovery. I am not going to limit myself from those joys, trust me. But I am just thinking about trying to be a little more thoughtful, a little more focused in 2023. Now, coming soon, um, I have a new custom shelving system that I'm going to be installing here in the new room. Uh, there will be a new extensive room tour um, when, when the time is ready for that, hopefully within the next month. Um, like I said, I still have to get, at, you know, 750, a thousand records out of storage. You know, those, um, those small U-Haul boxes, if you have them packed properly full of records, they're heavy. 
<laughs> and it's a, uh, it's a bit of a chore, but a chore of joy as we, as we move into the new year. Okay, I wanted to share with you, um, you know, between moving, end of year, kind of getting dialed in with work stuff, making sure I was where I needed to be at the end of the year on that front, um, kicking off 2023, I did manage to find a few stolen trips to different used shops here locally. And I did, like I mentioned earlier, I did make one Discogs purchase. Something that I've been looking for for a long time, couldn't find. Finally decided to pull the trigger. There's another album in 2023 at the top of my want list. Maybe a dear viewer might be obliged to part with their copy and, and we could come to terms on, on that uh, offline. <laughs> that is Donald... Fagan's second solo album from 1993, Comma Curiad, it is, it is at the top of my search list. Now, I know there are certain friends who watch my channel, and I know that some of these friends have copies of that album. Come on, guys! Let's think about it. Do you really need that copy? Especially if you've already made a, a digital copy of that. I'm thinking of a, a particular member of the VC who specializes in, in vinyl rips. <laughs> hey, let's get into some of those finds right now. First of all, this is something that I picked up yesterday here in Fort Collins at Driver 8 Records. Thank you, Charles, again. Beth Orton's incredible, magical album. This was the classic records cut on 200 gram vinyl, super vinyl. Um, compound that Classic Records used to use, R.I.P. Classic Records, Central Reservation. Um, you know, Beth Orton put out, I think it was Trailer Park, um, this past summer on Record Store Day. I was lucky enough to get a copy of that in Dublin, Ireland on my vacation in, in July. But this is probably my favorite. I think this might be her debut. Incredible, thought-provoking, emotional music, um, neo-acoustic folk tinged with some electronics. This is an incredible album. Um, can't believe that Charles in Fort Collins got his hand on an incredible collection that in included this album. And, you know, you have to hand it to you have to hand it to Classic Records. Uh, unlike some of these other reissue audiophile labels we have today, I mean, this is pretty cool. Uh, they were venturing out into indie artists and recognizing talent where they saw it and getting the rights to put out a fantastic album like this. This was the Gatefold. Oh, love that noise. And featuring songs like Stolen Car, Couldn't Cause Me Harm, So Much More, Stars All Seem to Weep. If you don't know Beth Orton, definitely check her out. She's still active. Um, I think she just put out a record uh, in 2022. I haven't heard that yet. This was um, originally released in 1999. Those were kind of her heady years, the late uh, 90s into the early aughts and used to have this on CD, listened to this incessantly over about a two year period and getting reacquainted with it right now. And this is a fantastic pressing. I'm sure many of you know Rob the Waxed. Um, he does the, you know, the bi-weekly, is it bi-weekly right now? <laughs> uh, auctions with uh, Patrick, the vinyl archivist. And of course he is well known as Rachel's uh, sidekick on the morning show, the morning streaming show that Rachel does almost seven days a week. Uh, Rob and I were able to strike a deal for Morrissey's solo album, Your Arsenal. This is a fantastic album produced by the legendary Mick Ronson. Back when Morrissey was still cool, uh, this is a rocking album and 
Um, I know Waxed, I think, I think it's documented that he stumbled across this and many other New Wave albums, uh, lots of Depeche Mode. I think he picked these things up for a dollar each. I'm not going to tell you what, <laughs> what Rob and I agreed to on this, but I am super happy to have this in the collection. It's a UK copy. Uh, this was on, of course, there it is, His Majesty's Voice. Great, great, great album. Uh, one of the best solo LPs that Morrissey has put out to date. There's another shop that I frequent in Fort Collins, Colorado called All Sales Vinyl. Shout out to All Sales Vinyl if you might be watching. Really, really high quality used records. Uh, they clean everything on an ultrasonic that they bring into the shop and fairly priced, not trying to gouge anyone. So I was incredibly pleased when I walked in on Monday, New Year's Monday or earlier this week and found a really, really incredible first pressing of the seminal uh, X album, Los Angeles. There it is with that iconic cover. This is the uh, early uh, first press. Uh, it was on a tip-on cover. This has got a really, really glossy. Uh, the slicks were kind of pasted on on the front and the back. Um, I do have the original inner sleeve, and if you know this album, you know how fantastic this is. You know, punk 1980 Los Angeles, West Coast punk meets rockabilly, uh, meets the poetry of John Doe. This is a must for any collection, and I am incredibly pleased to have a near mint first pressing in the collection. Now as far as iconic albums and album covers and seminal pieces of art from the early 1970s in New York City, we have to of course include the New York Dolls. Uh, the incredible slashing lead guitar of, of the late Johnny Thunders uh, this is an amazing album. We lost uh, Sylvan Sylvain, I think last year as well, rhythm guitar player, songwriter. Thankfully, David Johansson is still with us and alive and well. This is just proto-punk at its finest, uh, produced by Todd Rundgren, um, who has funny stories of um, somewhat getting along with the band at that time when they recorded this at the Record Plant Studios in New York. There are so many great songs, such a great attitude on this record. I could talk about personality crisis, I could talk about looking for a kiss, uh, but I think my favorite song on this album is on side two, and of course that is the third song on side two, Subway Train. Again, fantastic vocals and attitude from David Johansson. Uh, incredible bass playing. The rhythm section is great on this album, of course, and uh, it, the rhythm section of the early band was great. Uh, and that slashing, rhythmic, fantastic lead guitar from Johnny Thunders. New York Dolls, 1973. Uh, I took a rock and punk tour uh, on the east side of New York many years ago, and we walked by the storefront where that back cover shot was taken. Fantastic New York Dolls. The third Velvet Underground album released in 1969 is a little bit of a sleeper in their catalog, but it's a magical album. Um, you know, I picked up the, uh, the archival release from Lou Reed um, about a month ago, and that just shows you the depth and the beauty of, of Lou Reed's lyrics. And just, you know, his guitar playing is something to behold. And these early records, 
they they are they were the blueprint for so many bands coming up in the 1970s. Um, this album is a juxtaposition of of, uh, of of Lou Reed's driving, urgent rock, and then kind of the dreamy, yearnful, slower stuff like Pale Blue Eyes, which is on this album. Um, but we get Candy Says, What Goes On, uh, Side 2, Beginning to See the Light, uh, and some cool songs also, you know, Mo Tucker's got, takes the lead uh, on one of these tunes. The great Sterling Morrison on lead guitar. And at this point, Doug Ewell uh, was in on bass guitar. This is the 1985 reissue. It was remastered by Greg Kelby at Sterling Sound. And if you can find a copy of this, you're you're all set as far as this album is concerned. Um, those originals, the the original run of Velvet Underground albums, are so very very hard to find. They're so incredibly pricey these days. Um, doing a bunch of research, I heard about this '85 reissue and and pulled the trigger on one that came available. Um, I had it on a on a watch list on Discogs, and there you go. With that gorgeous reproduction of the Verve label, the 1969 self-titled Velvet Underground album is an outright classic. Last but not least, a box set that I've had my eye on for a long time. I, uh, in, in 2022, I... Um, I managed to find a really nice reissue of Brighter Later uh, from Nick Drake. But when I saw this yesterday at Charles's shop in Fort Collins, Driver 8 Records, this is the Collected Root, the Collected Works, Nick Drake Fruit Tree, 1979 UK reissue. Uh, this is a three record set with a gorgeous booklet inside. Uh, the records look like they've never been played. I got a great deal. Um, in addition to having a gift card that, again, my wife <laughs> picked up for me for Christmas, so that took a little bit of the sting off. Um, there is a four record set uh, as well of this floating around. Some detractors don't like the fact that the original albums that are presented here also have some bonus tracks on the same record. Doesn't matter to me. Um, listening to just the first album, um, Five Leaves Left, the sound is incredible on this and it sounds better than the reissue I have of that album as well. Really nice packaging. This is the inner sleeve of, uh, of record one. And what they did is they reproduced the Blue Island uh, label uh, from the time. Great, great, great sounding records. Nick Drake, Fruit Tree, the complete recorded works. Here's a look at the booklet. You know, this is a about a 20 page booklet. There's the three original albums that of course were released uh, between what 1969 and 1973 I believe and we get all the lyrics and some nice images as well which are not easy to find of Nick Drake believe it or not. Nick Drake Fruit Tree highly recommended if you can find one or take a look on Discogs the sound on these albums is amazing. It's again, similarly to the Velvet Underground story, finding first original pressings of Nick Drake records is a difficult uh, journey that you may not want to take, uh, not to mention expensive. So happy that I found uh, this box set at Driver 8 Records in Fort Collins. That's it, that's my first video for 2023. Feels good to be back. Um, 
I am digging uh, the new room that I have here. I'm going to share more of that soon, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I want to take a minute and say thank you very much uh, to all the new subscribers that have recently come on board and um, taken some time out of their day to watch one of my channels. I have a tendency to blather on, uh, but hopefully people are enjoying the content and will continue to enjoy the content. I'm going to um, going to be working harder uh, over the coming year to put out more consistent more fun videos um, although I was on a pretty good tack for quite a while up until the end of uh, last year um, the only reason I do this is I love to share my collection I love the interaction the comments are fantastic and the fact that I am approaching 7,500 subscribers here in the first week of January uh, 2023 after being on YouTube for in the vinyl community for less than two years. I'm coming up on my two year anniversary. Just blows my mind that that many people have subscribed and thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay tuned, I'll be back soon.